to my fans and those who know me, I would like to say um, I spoke at some length about mad cow disease, how in the news it was found that a cow had come down with it in the United States and California, a grower. Uh, it was a genetic reason. The cow had a genetic reason where uh, his enzymes weren't producing enough protection for his uh, what they call prions. Um, that set up an unhealthful blood chemistry in him and he was easily damaged by the barrage of chemicals that are already in our environment. Um, and so with that I wanted to say about my own theory about how I might have come down with this prion. Um, it bothers me that the prions do exist. I'm sure they've been used as biological weapons. Um, the DMSO I mentioned, although it's not approved by the FDA, and it, it's, it, a doctor probably wouldn't administer it, and it probably changes into something else once it enters the blood system, into something less beneficial than its original constituency. Uh, the only way it's going to work is if the person uses it right in the, right in the beginning. So I've been doing just a little more research about it, poking around. I guess there has been some deaths in the United States about ma of, of mad cow disease. Where in England, I, had over I apologize, I had over-exaggerated the number of deaths of mad cow disease. It's more like several hundred in, in, in England, or the United Kingdom, the UK. Um, where in the United States, there's only been a dozen or so and they only lasted two months. Um, they don't have. They only last, stayed alive for two months. Uh, these sixty days. I've been alive for fifteen months, and my theory is because my prion is not from an animal or other so or some other source of it, but my own prion, my own body's prion. We remember. I I theorize that we all have prions. It's like from that YouTube article that protect us from ultraviolet light, oxidative stress. Um, free radical damage, and they induce a sense of well-being uh, until they're damaged uh, by, um, by these chemicals. Actually, I'm beginning to believe that it's less the chemicals that damage them than the body's um, internal biochemistry. And um, what I'm about to say is like, sure, I might have been exposed to small, minute amounts of organophosphate pesticide. Lice lotions might contain organophosphate pesticides that we give to our daycare children, or flea and tick powders, or anti-mite uh, powders that we put uh, around our pets or on their collar. It can all maybe set up the stage for incubation of these prions later on in life. Um, it set, it set the stage to cause Alzheimer's. They say the incubation period might be 10 to 40 years. My, uh, at our house, we grew, grew our own eggs, but we put on the chickens a lot of organophosphate um, pesticide powder. I, um, I think it's from, so that um, the chickens wouldn't peck each other because of mites or something like that. And so that organophosphate pesticide might have gotten into the, into the hen's eggs, through the hen itself, and damaged the prions inside those hen, hen's eggs. Because all the all the prions that are going to be are in that egg. I was like, all the prions that are in going to be in that hen's body are in that egg already. Because we don't make new prions. We're we're born with a set n number of them. I believe that the um, that a few um, damaged prions can destroy the rest of our prions in our body uh, over time and increase the numbers of of uh, prions. Um, my theory, though, is I had been diagnosed with schizophrenia, and I had been using an antipsychotic medication. Uh, the medication was Abilify. Before that, it was Respiral. Of course, I believe the diagnosis to pertain more to depression than to any cellular um, abnormality uh, or inherent tendency to it, uh, uh, to sch schizophrenia. And so I believe that that medication set me up for lower blood pressure. I'm more susceptible if I take, took it with different things. And uh, that medication... Um, around
around the time I had used it for about seven years, I had become more vulnerable to the uh, effects of these medications. And towards those medications do a lot of things. They they can cause diabetes, um, loss in um, appetite, and um, impaired motor judgment, and um, lethargy also um, can cause a kind of kind of a so um, a, a, depre a, a depressive diabetes in a way, and when you're under stress, uh, your brain kind of flips on you when you use those have used those medications. My theory is that I went and I took some extends, which has yohimbi. The yohimbi lowers blood pressure, but I didn't just take one pill of extends a day like it says for six months. Right off the get-go, I started. I, I used another formula that had an active ingredient with Yohimbi, and also an, another um, supplement that had an active ingredient with Yohimbi. I think that that lowered my blood pressure enough, so that a detrimental, along with the medication that I've been taking, I was more susceptible to an adverse biochemistry. That's what it says on those labels. If you have schizophrenia, don't use this um, aphrodisiac. Um, well, they never said why. It's like, just because you have schizophrenia doesn't mean you, you can't use, change these things. It's the, it, just because you have schizophrenia doesn't mean that you're susceptible to these products. It's after you've used the medications that the Monsanto and these other pharmaceutical companies give you that you become susceptible to adverse reaction. So, um, I believe that having lowered my, it having lowered my blood pressure and I felt a niacin sin flush, but also a drop in blood pressure. Later on that week, I kind of felt pasty and kind of out of sorts. Well, I do drink a lot of milk. Maybe it was the milk, because remember that the, the Dairy Association gives a lot of manganese and copper in their salt balance, uh, in, in their salt licks that the cows get. And so that's probably how I got the un, un mineral imbalance, because you know, maybe um, it's like maybe these cows require require uh, these minerals to offset blood pressure and other medical issues, but it's the wrong balance of trace minerals and and whatnot. Uh, it hasn't been engineered to these animals. It's been engineered by Monsanto and other other or chemical manufacturers, which who are not necessarily veterinarians or not qualified. Remember the Tibetan Himalayas, the Titicacans, and the Hunzans gets that glacial runoff with those trace minerals in a better, more natural uh, balance. And so maybe it was, maybe it was my poor diet, or or drinking too much milk, or getting too much. Uh, it's like I don't know what else it could have been, because it extends and other similar products like at Walmart, and I, there's about I had about three of them. Plus I took a zinc supplement which did contain copper, a, a trace amount of copper. Uh, it, in that um, zinc monomethionine supplement. So I was exposed, and it's like, and I, it's like, on top of that, I, w I was, I took two pills of Viagra to see what its function on someone who might need it in the future, like in marriage or whatnot would be. And so I think that kind of messed with my blood pressure just like two Viagra pills, um, a zinc loss, a zinc lozenge with copper, um, an extends pill um, containing Yohimbi, and another which lowers blood pressure, and another pill containing Yohimbi, and one last pill containing Yohimbi for about 25 mg to 30 milligrams of Yohimbi alkaloid standardized extract. So, I think that's what caused my mad cow disease. I don't think I ingested someone else animals prion. I think it was damage the, to, of my own body but to my own prion, um, not an animal prion, which is probably different than a human prion. Uh, so far, there's no, there's no DMSO will neutralize the prion for only 24 hours or maybe for 12 hours. I'm not sure probably just for 12 hours. Right now we don't have something that will get into that molecular opening and jam up the prion so that it becomes neutral or benign. 
we haven't been able to do that. It's an organic molecule. Uh, I, do, I do not think, it's not a protein. I really do not think that it's a protein. God does better work than that, making a protein. It's, it's something more esoteric. Because without that, uh, we would have sunburn. A prion has absorbed the ultraviolet radiation. We have skin damage. We, we'd have di vision difficulties. So the prion, it can't be destroyed by heat, by oxygen, by um, uh, chem most normal chemical means, although maybe hydrochloric acid would dissolve the molecule. Um, probably would, if you've ever taken chemistry. Um, it can't be killed in an oven, like if it's on a surgical instrument, or if you if, or if someone had that illness, um, it's called Kuru or CJD, creutzfeldt jakob disease, or scrofula. Those are some names for it. Because think about it, in the wild, the, the, it might not be that the deer were eating too much plants containing manganese. It might be that. The, the plant itself lowered their blood pressure to the point where these enzymes and other things were in an un unnatural balance and that caused a cascade that led to the, the damage the easily more easily damage of these of our prions by the manganese and the copper that had to be in their diet the, the deer's diet so so maybe those pine needles or that sage when it was in time of famine and they were hungry it lowered their blood pressure and that really disrupted them because they were vulnerable anyway because after all that's all they eat well i'm not a veterinarian and all of these are just my opinions but i'm just trying to put a few more things on the table i i think i really am in the later stages of the illness because it is it is progressing i don't think that it can be i even though it's important to use dmso at the beginning of stages of it. I don't think that you could sustain yourself on on it indefinitely, like to have a normal lifespan. I think four years would be more than what, it, what it's capable of doing, because you also have to change your diet. You have to eliminate commercial foods that might contain these wrong balances of minerals, too much copper, too much manganese, like what they feed to cattle. And Monsanto feeds soybeans, genetically injured soybeans to cattle, which contains more organophosphate pesticides. I think there's a name for it, GMO or something like that. Which, uh, first of all, genetically altering things is wrong and, and could be dangerous. And next of all, to, to genetically engineer it so that you can spray more pesticides on it is wrong. And remember who developed those pesticides? It was the Nazis in World War. Uh, was it true? World War Two or World War One? They they designed organophosphate pesticide to be a nerve agent to use on troops. I see, and. Uh, Spraying our cattle, especially in England, with it, especially in certain areas where where there's more nerves and more prions in certain parts of the cow's body, sets up for that prion um, damage to occur. And so that's what I think um, set it up because I think a month later I was having breathing difficulties, um, and then from there it just cascaded out of control and I could go into the symptoms but not in this segment um, and so it's Thomas Jefferson said uh, revolution it's a normal thing like so much uh, manure fodder on our, but you know that's exact that's exactly it mad cow disease it's the one disease that could occur in nature because um, most, most people say they eat healthy and they're protected from things like that, but no one can eat that healthy. No one could stop that kind of a, a problem. And the pharmaceutical drugs can set people up for that bad reaction when, when that blood pressure gets lowered and other things could occur for prion damage. Because um, think about it. That disease, okay, it, uh, viruses, parasites, bacteria, fungi, um, protozoa, you name it, those are not supposed to be here. They could not have been created on their own. Uh, some some higher power had to create those things or they would not have been made because we've never seen evolution occur in a laboratory. We can't create any cell in a laboratory from these scratch base elements or amino acids uh, that could be created from base elements for any chemical comp means that we know of. Electromagnetism, heat, freezing, um, I don't know what, what other forces are there. Um, uh, acidic, base, neutral. 
It's like we can't do it in a laboratory. So if we have haven't done it by now, I don't think it would have life would have ever occurred in the ten billion years that we have left that are of of the sun's life. <laughs> it's like so. Um, so I'm going to get off the microphone now. Uh, but the prion, it's the one illness that could occur to us. It's like it can't necessarily be stopped. Um, and I'm afraid that because the CDC has no quarantine for this illness, that it can end up in the water supply. Because once again, it cannot be killed. Uh, steam distillation would probably, they, the chemists would have to figure out where a prion would stay and not evaporate. It would stay behind and the water would still be safe and then they'd have to add the right the proper balance of minerals back manganese miners illness is similar excuse me Mangan at the turn of the 20th century miners working in a manganese mine came into an incurable psychosis that led in death it's because the manganese damaged their internal prions and so uh, that's the last bit of information that I have right now about the mad cow disease the cause of death is that the patient lapses into a coma or their lungs fail them. I don't know about heart attack or stroke yet. I haven't looked up into those symptoms, but that's how the person would end up dying and really wasting away and losing strength and their glandulars and spinal cord and brain become inflamed and more spongy and uh, um, very sad actually. Um, and so it, it, eventually it gets harder for them to breathe, to talk, to be motivated, to get out in public and walk. Uh, the prion is not a psychological toxin inducer, but its mechanism is a free radical damager to cause plaque and amyloid to form inside the brain. Uh, that plaque, um, eventually the cell loses electrical signal and dies. Only nootropic drugs might be able to stabilize a patient and prolong their life longer than the DMSO. The nootropic drugs, aside from nutrients, I'm not talking about Viagra. I'm talking about paracetam, which is only available in Canada or Mexico. I'm talking about having chelation therapy in Canada and Mexico that will remove the heavy metals, the arsenic, the lead, the cadmium, the mercury from one's body. It's intravenous. It can't it's like it's very hard to find a practitioner in the United States that's, that's not afraid uh, to use it, the chelation therapy. So those are the things I suggest for prolonging a person's life who has mad cow disease. Paracetam, and there's a, I've listed some other nootropic, N-O-O-T-R-O-P-I-C drugs that might reestablish and protect electrobiochemistry in the brain, increase the person's libido, uh, protect the cell, because nootropic drugs are more like making someone more bionic, okay? And I don't know what's, what is a safe dose and how do you know if the pharmaceutical company is really giving you the real thing? Uh, nutrients in a health food store might be able to do the same thing, like certain B vitamins, phosphatine, phosphatidylserine, choline, and inositol, lecithin. Some of those things might do the same thing, but not to the extent of what has been covered up by the FDA. Instead, they want us to use... Um, antipsychotic drugs which they don't even know how they work they don't understand how they work uh, they're more like putting a person under it's like more like a narcotic an alcohol something that sedates a person that's not medically in tune with the Hippocratic Oath of do no harm um, it's like when the doctor doesn't understand how they work on the patient and when there's those kind of side effects it's probably better to leave it well enough alone and that's what doctors wanted to use on me they didn't even if I had schizophrenia this is what the medical establishment wanted me to, to go on an antipsychotic drug not not Abilify but something newer except that might aggravate the condition and it wouldn't necessarily establish the electrical balance like a nootropic drug like paracetam would um, it probably is like a chemical cover-up and chemical cover-ups are the last thing we need. So thank you for listening to this. And if I have any more sources of how I might have come down with this, I will mention it. But I think it was the aphrodisiac yohimbi along with just a slew of things that would have led to an unhealthful situation combined with year, seven years of using Abilify that would have left me susceptible to lower blood pressure. Um, see, anyone...
who could be damaged by using something like like uh, Abilify or other antipsychotic drugs. Think of the political disadvantage it puts them in, and it robs them of their sex life. It robs them of being able to cope normally with the daily stresses of life. Um, it, it's like, in the morning I would wake up and I'd feel drained, like all my bl blood was being drained out of me. And I attribute that mostly to the Abilify, to, um, for lowering blood pressure or, or other things. Um, and so, I, I, I'd like to see our government get away from these legislating these things or funding Monsanto and these and these pharmaceutical drugs. I would like to see more free, um, more freedom of these uh, before mentioned treatments that I've mentioned onto the market. Um, less hostility towards chiropractors and people who use a, clue, a cool blue laser uh, and other things. Less hostility for manufacturers of more better uh, cancer machines like they get um, exported to Spain. Um, so thank you for listening. Hi, um, this is 1607 Link on YouTube. I needed to make an amendment to my last video uh, about where I think I might have come down with mad cow disease if I hadn't have eaten it from a contaminated source of animal. That it was my own damaged prions that I that I that I um, created in me by using the wrong blo blood pressure kind of slew um, over-the-counter things and pharmaceutical things that might have set up the wrong blood pressure. Uh, why do you think people in Africa or in other third world countries have developed the Kuru or the mad cow disease illness that their ancestors, um, it's like would, they'd eat each other when, when they didn't want. Where did it even come from? Not from animals that they hunted or gathered. It's because they lived on herbs, roots and things some of these herbs over time are very toxic to the system, um, but that's all they had to eat for food. And so those roots were kind of like, might have lowered their blood pressure, and then the mineral content in the herbs, in the roots, might have um, hurt, their, hurt these villagers. And so um, the other point I wanted to mention about antipsychotic medication, I feel that we should not legislate the for a, a, um, someone with a mental illness. It should not be a legislative thing that their terms of receiving the disability of social security or benefit should be based on whether or not they're using what the Monsanto or other pharmaceutical companies are telling them is best for them to use. It's like that should not be a stip ever be a stipulation on someone receiving a benefit. It's like um, it should be left up to that patient of their own free will in a court. After all, it's their own body. Have you ever heard of the same kind of power as in a, a woman's right to choose to have an abortion? It's like um, the same thing, the same kind of principle might apply t to someone who's been diagnosed with autism or ADD. Uh, it's like for them to get the benefit, it's like when they've been discriminated or might be discriminated on in the job place or looked upon in a different way, or, or put in, treated differently, or treated with uh, any kind of, um, what do you call it, affirmative action, anything that falls into the category or su subject of affirmative action. It's like, after all, the FDA bans Lily of the Valley, uh, or the beneficial alkaloids, even if those beneficial alkaloids haven't been discovered yet, that doesn't mean they couldn't be dis uh, replicated in a laboratory, uh, a lily of the valley. If it's just like a unicorn thing, that doesn't mean those that a pharmacist couldn't replicate um, something that would do something similar to those alkaloids of, of what's in the lily of the valley, which is used for schizophrenia. It's like, nootropic drugs only in Canada or Mexico have been banned by the FDA. Who doesn't put things up for review? Like the FDA banned L-tryptophan, and that's still off the market. It's like, it's like, what what use is that? You can only get a more expensive version of tryptophan, LH hydroxy tryptophan. It's like, so that's what I'm saying about um, social security disability benefits. Uh, I believe there should be no taxation without representation. After all, someone in a wheelchair isn't said, hey, unless you get uh, the surgery on your knee, you can't receive the social security benefit. It's like, so why can why do they think they can tell someone with a mental illness that they have to use this these medications before they can get this funding? It's like, so so often I, I've been turned away at the door of physicians and mental clinics um, 
because they don't want to see me just because I'm not willing to try something that Monsanto has developed for them to, to use. It's like something, once again, they don't understand how it works, and, and it has all these awful side effects. It, it really ends up taking away the patient's um, um, quality of life, not adding to it. It's like, and if a patient feels like they don't want to take these things, or if they have to be sedated by these things, it's like they should be put allowed an option to, to go in a safe environment. It's like, why doesn't the government fund that? It's like, they, these people have rights too. It's like a safe environment where they won't need to use these medications for any reason, if that's what they choose. Not even to prevent seizures. And yet, it's like, patients are allowed to go off their medication and drive a car, even if they have seizures. And so, um, that's what I'm saying about that. Now, animal studies could be used to, to see if a patient has mad cow disease because the tests that are available like to uh, measure the total prion or x-ray in the brain at the late end of stages like to detect for holes or Swiss cheese effect that's just not feasible it doesn't always it isn't always reliable right away it's like so how would Social Security fund this um, fun, fund um, Social Security disability for mad cow disease if they can't even diagnose it using an animal putting a subcutaneous uh, specimen from the patient's of skin from a, a, a dermal layer into that animal they should come down with the illness that is if animals are susceptible to the human form of the prion maybe it's not an animal prion in that person's body but um, maybe it's um, um, maybe it's, animals aren't susceptible any like mice or sheep or goats or cows aren't susceptible to the kind of prion that's what's in the human body, but maybe they are. Studies might um, be able to determine that. But I found gridlock, like no hospital or anything wants to use me as a study or anything like that. I find it, find it ama amazing. Um, I'm now in the stage of the illness where I have experienced the lethal high, and this is about 15 to 16 months into the into the disease it's like that lethal high where your brain feels like it's floating on electrical uh, electrical an electron and, and and you kind of get, get into a sissified baby state it's like um, you start worrying about things like salvation grace and um, you, you start um, um, you really you mentally your mental capacity you're really wearing away it feels like you're really crumbling so I, I feel I have more empathy for that. So that's where I'm at. Again, these opinions are my own. I am not a scientist. I am not a doctor. So please uh, establish these facts with your family physician if you have any questions. This is part three of an amendment, and I'll try to make this one brief. I believe that it only takes one prion molecule, only one prion molecule, whether through the city's water supply or or from wherever to start the incubation of the problem uh, that causes an imbalance and I think it damages your body's own internal prions so it just keeps adding and adding and building until finally you start to notice the damage that that one prion molecule has caused. The CDC I talked with in Reno said that there's less than 1% transmission, transmissionable of the prion through any bodily fluid like if you're washing your clothes and it had blood on it it's like or any bodily fluid or or sexual bodily fluid or any or teardrops or I don't think it's in teardrops but small amounts have been reported they say to have be in the blood but so far the transmissibility is more likely only to be one percent you're looking at huge dilutions of it uh, when it gets into the water supply it's like and then there's the 10 to 40 year incubation if you only got one molecule of that prion. It's like, um, so it's like I wouldn't count on it being completely safe of your bodily fluids, but it's probably still so minuscule that if you had a prion on your clothes because you sat down on something, that it would probably wash off and wash away on the laundry. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't wash your hands regularly because the prion will probably wash off with soap and water and, and end up in the municipality system where it cannot. It's like if it remains in the water as a molecule, then it ends back up in the city system. Because remember that the ultraviolet light or the 
chlorine or anything they put in the water is not going to destroy it. It's like, so even though the water looks pure and had been treated chemically, and then the chemical removed, or, or what have you, um, it's like, that's why I'm against dumping fluoride into our water system. It does not strengthen teeth enamel. We've been lied to. Dentists have been lied to about it. There's no scientific evidence, either in veterinary medicine or anything, except th that fluoride concentrates in our kidneys. It's like, I don't know why the FDA would ever allow a toxin to be entering. It, it'll turn your teeth yellow, I think is what it'll do, and maybe set up the stages for cancer. It's like, we need to stop dumping fluoride into our water, just because Monsanto wants a tax write-off for it. Um, Remember, if you're going to use DMSO, check with your doctor and check check with the Food and Drug Administration, because DMSO must be used in dilutions only. Because there have my, my, the pharmacy pharmacist at Olson's Corner Drugstore said there have been deaths regarding DMSO. Of course, how does he know it was the DMSO and not the mad cow disease? Because people rub DMSO on their skin all the time as an analgesic. It's a similar compound as in what's in rainwater, and that absorbs it's it's it absorbs right through your skin. It's like, although when you manufacture when it's manufactured, I don't know if it has the same. Um, it's like I don't know if it's the exact same as it was in rainwater. I don't know if it's as safe as it was in rainwater or is it natural, but probably only a, t a few teaspoons in eight ounce ounces of water is all you'd want to take to have some to know that you're doing it safely. But the more you dilute it, the more you want to take it over the course of the day, once every four hours. It's like depending on the dilution you're using. So um, I was shocked when I saw how fast people in the United States who come down with mad cow disease have died. I theorized that my, the reason why I've lived 15 years is because uh, I theorized uh, is because it's my own body's prions and maybe an animal's prions that these people have gotten uh, speed up the process faster. If you only have then, then their own natural body's prion would. It only take or or someone else's body's uh, somebody else's prion. It only takes. I think it really only does take one prion to start the process. But then that process would become recognizable in a while. I think other than things I mentioned, wheatgrass juice, uh, high protein things. See, a person with illness can't afford to to be waiting on food stamps. A person with this illness cannot be afford can af cannot afford a low social security allowance. That person needs a certain kinds of foods that they're hungry for. Otherwise, they fall into immediate depressions, and um, and their psychosis can can tip tip a little off the scale. It's like that patient needs food when they need it, of the kind of what they want and what they're thirsty for, what they're hungry for, right then and there, or or they'll lose valuable time and energy. They'll lose hundreds of dollars trying to fend for their own self and go around looking for food. Um, Most people who have this need hyperbolic oxygen or other forms of oxygen. And uh, it, like I say, education about physicians about this illness is very scanty because it is taboo. Who would have heard of an illness that's natural, that happens in nature anyway, that maybe you could get it from eating deer meat, by the way. It's like, and all they did was eat herbs, which dam or, or certain, the wrong kind of flora, which damaged their, their prion. So it's something that's natural. You don't need pesticides. You don't need... Um, blood pressure and medica lowering medications or something wrong like that to happen. Um, but, you know, our, it's probably our fertilizers, everything that we grow. We probably put too much manganese and copper and other the wrong balance of minerals into the soil, as like we're, like we're dumping um, too much um, fluoride into our water supply to, you know, to supply these rich suppliers, to make them rich fast on things that are ha hazardous from the earth. It's like, so we're probably putting these things into our soil as fertilizers, and they're, and they're, and they're, um, so all the food we're eating, we're over accumulating this wrong balance of minerals. And if your, your blood pressure falls below the wrong thing, then your, 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 all those wrong minerals are right there in your system ready to damage your prions. Um, we need to put rock dust and granite dust back into our soil. Those are the only things, um, uh, like from reputable and essayed and time, um, known sources like the Tibetan Himalayas and the Titicacas and the Hunsas get it's not that the minerals that they're drinking it's like the, the, this milky water it's not that, that that they're drinking it's how they get it from their food because the bacteria in the soil break down the minerals 
Only then are, is the plant able to uptake the minerals into the root system, and then it go, undergoes a, a, uh, an osmosis change. The mineral becomes an organic mineral, and that's the only way we're able to absorb our minerals safely. It's like amino acid chelated minerals may not be completely safe, uh, although they're 50% they're more absorbable than what's in Centrum, which is only 5%. And as you get older, inorganic rock forms like zinc oxide, which is what is in Centrum and passes right through you into the pora potty, it becomes 3% uh, absorbable. And so we have more need for minerals. Like our, our hair gets gray because of a, uh, of a tin deficiency, as in tin can. Um, It's like we have diabetes at an all-time high because we don't have that chromium in our soil. Uh, the ba no, uh, Pyramid of Life is a vitamin that uses yeast autolyzed minerals. Uh, so, so the minerals were digested by yeast, and so they become far more bio biologically available. Um, and, and I think that's going to be the trend of the future. And to eliminate the wrong kinds of minerals, like aluminum is high in a lot of these. I would never use dark, uh, I never use colloidal minerals. I wouldn't use colloidal silver. I wouldn't use colloidal minerals from an ancient shell deposit. You don't know if they're safe. They're high in aluminum. It's like uh, you don't know if there's a, a mesozoic protozoa. We don't even know if using trace minerals from the Great Salt Lake over time is going to be safe. It might also have too much manganese, too much copper, or or something else, or some radioactive, you know, isotope or mineral that would be uh, hurtful for our glandulars or our thyroid. Um, Artificial, uh, um, what is it? The iodized, iodized, artificial iodized, uh, or the mineral, the it, the rock form of the mineral would probably be very bad in our salt, and yet we take that, and that might cause problems to occur with our thyroid and other things. Um, so we need to find plant-rich base sources of these minerals, like kelp. Um, and uh, spirulina and blue green algae and other things might might be a, a safer way to get our minerals instead of taking them in in supplement form and so those are a few of the ideas that i that i have but when we put too much pesticides or other things on our soil it will kill those bacteria the bacteria will no longer be able to break down the minerals or rocks uh or or the, or deal with minerals from wind erosion or other things uh, the pesticides and the, the nitrogen and the phosphorus the, and the calcium, too much of that is going to, uh, like, like in Greek and Roman times where they used lead pottery and it, it destroyed their nation because they started developing psychoses and, that, and then it became inheritable because it caused chromosomal damage. And so that wore away at their nation in part. The other part is God had a vengeance for them for how he treated, the, treated his people. Not how he treated, not how they treated him, but what they did to his people as a nation. It's like that's why those civilizations fell. It's not because of their religion or their beliefs, but how they kept treating the Jewish nation who who came in the name of the Lord. Um, and so we need to stop with this wrong kind of fertilizing, with the wrong kind of pesticides. Uh, we need to start looking into essential oils and other things that will repel insects and will be much more benign and mo much more safe. And England needs to stop spraying their cattle for, for the Orville, to control the Orville fly population. I'd rather take the food poisoning from the Orville fly population than I would from this, this mad cow disease. And um, so, again, I'm not a scientist. I only have one semester at Boise State University. I have not documented what I've said. However, I will say this. If you want to know what I have found out, you can go on the internet and do, you can look it on YouTube, but the articles, the research material is there on you, on the World Wide Web. All you have to do is type in a buzzword like DMSO, uh, treatment for mad cow disease, and it will go through the organic name of it, the molecule, um, the, the, the enzymes that happen when there's um, damaged pr uh, prions, or, or when, when conditions that lead to damaged prions, and um, that's why I think wheatgrass juice will be beneficial for someone with this illness to put their nutritional and other needs back into support to, to resupport their blood chemistry that's been um, put out of whack and get their enzymes level natural to drink less processed foods, drink less milk that, where the, where the cow had been fed the pesticides, the, um, the, the manganese and copper that which is fed in their salt lick, that all ends up in their milk, in our milk supply. To get off the, those kind of um, 
high marketability foods if, if you have the illness to slow it down. But I think you can only slow the progress of the illness for about four years. And you'd have to almost titrate that DMSO into your body safely um, almost every four hours um, or 12 hours or certainly within a 24 hour period of time. You can tell I'm kind of short of breath because I'm gasping for breath to relay this information before, uh, as Ronald Reagan says, uh, I slip the burly bonds of death and, and touch the sorry face of God. It's like that was written by, written by a speechwriter, and yet that's what Katy Perry sings when she says, um, As you shoot across the sky, 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 baby, you're a firework. Go and make them show what you're worth. Make them go, uh, uh, uh. It's that astronaut who went into the, who was in the space shuttle challenge disaster. It's like, that's who I think she was singing about in that song. Uh, I think her name was Kath, Katie McAuliffe or some, something such to that effect. It's like, that's what mad cow disease meant to me. It was like the shuttle challenger disaster. Uh, we're putting our best foot forward and then all of a sudden, without a word, you, it's like you couldn't, be, you couldn't be helped, you couldn't be treated. It's like you're on death, death and you didn't know what you did wrong. It's like, all I did was take two doses of, those, uh, of the slew of those pills that I had taken that lowered my blood pressure. And that's all it took uh, to to have caught, set up this disease. And then a year later, after that, is when the symptoms started manifesting. And it's been almost over a year now since the first gastrointestinal problem started. It moved to cause myalgia-like symptoms, uh, breathing difficulty. Then it moved. Then it started affecting my hearing, hearing impairing that my breathing. Well, the hearing came later, but it did start affecting my ocular and my vision. Uh, it took four hours to get out of bed. I developed a, a pain in the small of my back, um, trying to regain consciousness, having um, philosophical quandaries, wondering about the meaning of life, losing sensation in your face, developing a red rash on my face, developing the red rash on the backs of my hands, developing photosensitivity, developing um, ne needing a lot of copious amounts of water and food, like needing food like McDonald's as medicine. It's like... Um, it's like the gastrointestinal problems. I couldn't digest milk, wheat, and, and beans very well. It's like what I was smelling in my bowel movement was really my, my own biochemistry, myself breaking down. Um, and, uh, and then my voice gave way. It became really raspy. Um, uh, I couldn't sing anymore. Um, people started... Um, Believing it, believing me less. They they just couldn't relate to what I was telling them. Um, I had cold sweats and night sweats on occasion, but that that subsided. The symptoms would come and go, almost like the prion would do its damage, and then the body would try to rep repair itself. Uh, so that's just a plethora of the slew. Excuse me, that I know of. Um, and. Uh, and feeling like the fear of lapsing into a coma while you sleep and, and never wake up, the, that started happening. Almost like I could just fall into a, a manhole walking down the street. Like a, my whole body would just turn into jello and just like, just, I'd just be, I'd just drop into a puddle of jello. So that's, and then, and then having the, the high, the unnatural high in the, in the brain. And then ha uh, memory loss and uh, loss of coordination and, and dizziness upon standing. Uh, that's everything that I've um, been experiencing. Thank you for listening, and God bless the United States of America. And so I needed to uh, say, in closing, in Mad Cow Disease Part 4, that when I talked with the CDC, they listed a whole slew, a plethora of diseases that count for quarantinable uh, regulations that's, uh, in, uh, that's been drafted into legislation. But none of those diseases, and nothing allows for mad cow disease to be quarantined. And there's no special funding given to anyone who has it to protect or safeguard the city's municipality. No one's required to wear any bracelet or anything letting surgeons know that they have the disease so that the surgeons don't get in their, on their instruments and spread it. Why am I worried about surgeons? Because remember, they don't necessarily wash or, or sanitize these instruments, and even if they did, it might not work. Because something those mi microbial or those excuse me, not microbial that 
organic molecule might still be on the knife, even though it, it tends to wash off. It's like, also, if they heat it in an oven, it will not kill the prion. Because, think about it, how stable these prions have to be to do their job. So, of course, they wouldn't necessarily, by the laws of chemistry, want to break down that easily. The other thing I will mention is that nor should a person be cremated because what happens eventually someone sp wants the urn or the vase and so they they spread the ashes out or it's like that releases the prion into the environment it's like there's no standard for their the person's coffin or casket it's like any animal could get in there in theory and then that animal might spread the contagion because remember it propagates it multiplies um, but normally as a rule of thumb we don't leak out a lot of prions we're born with a set amount of them and that's what stays in us for life um, it's like we don't just keep manufacturing them so um, I just wanted to mention that I think there needs to be more regulation someone needs to be able to go into isolation get off the city municipalities there should, there should be funding for the government for end-of-care hospice and other things those all the services have been partially turned away from me because it, it takes more money it's like if I were to apply for a nursing home I don't know if I would get in because I have you know, I've never done this before um, but I did have someone read me the law and and things like tuberculosis and other things um, typhoid those things are all quarantinable but mad cow disease is not on that list and so that's why I think uh, the federal quarantine list and uh, Really, there needs to be special facilities where the sewage goes into a septic system that uh, remains there forever. So anyone with manganese, minor illness, or anything like that, it's like those antipsychotic, those antipsychotic drugs aren't going to slow it down. That's how we know that it's not a psychotic illness. It's something that has to do with your blood chemistry. Um, and the blood-brain barrier does not stop a prion from getting past it. Uh, it's like, as eventually, the blood-brain barrier might get damaged by the prion, and, and, and then it would get through. Maybe it gets through anyway. So thank you for listening, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you for watching. This is 1607 Link on the YouTube channel, and now we're into part five because I did need to add one last note to the sad story of mad cow disease. And that is research. How precious little funding and research has been done for it. What is mad cow disease again? A bacteria or a virus? Something that you can get by going into a bat cave or, or something that happens when flies, the fly population hits animals or like England might, might presuppose or what is what are prions well why hasn't any researcher bothered to even mention that every biological mammal I don't know about reptiles but mammals have prions in them it's like we need them to live they protect our skin our dermal layer from ultraviolet light oxidative stress free radical damage and induce a sense of euphoria and well-being in the in the um, layers of our skin and it's not a protein, it's more like an organic molecule, something so esoteric that it cannot be destroyed by heat, by a furnace, by burning a body, by cremating it. Those, you have as many prions after you've, de after you've de been dead for a hundred years as you had when you first started. And so, obviously science hasn't kept to pace with this. Oh, we think it's a, pro we think it's a, a protein. I, when there's a genetic disturbance in the human genome, a person might, or a certain uh, history in their family, a person might produce the prion disease or the protein. It's like a protein, as, as in where does our body manufacture strange proteins like that? It's like not normally, unless, unless, unless there's another disease process going on that also has signs and symptoms of its own, some other bi biochemical deficit. Without that, it's like there could be no diagnosis for some kind of strange protein uh, that happens uh, happens onto the scene to cause like an Alzheimer's like problem that there's no cure treatment or diagnosis until death where when there can do it when you can do an autopsy although animal studies where you remove a slight 
part of a, 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 you remove just a slight piece of skin under a sub a way sub down below a subdermal level. It's like if, if that's if you put that in, a, in an animal, they'll die. Because if you put a root canal under a rabbit's skin, they'll die. Why does the ant rabbit die? Because that root canal gives off a disease tox, um, an antioxidant bacteria that mutated from the root canal. And, and almost inevitably, the, the rabbits have heart attacks and die from the antioxidant, anti-aerobic bacteria that's produced by root canals. And so the same thing would happen in um, using animals. I don't know what variety of animals yet. But then you could then Social Security could determine mad cow disease as a disability depending on how long it takes. A cow usually takes about four four years uh, to develop it. So they might have the illness and just might not show it. In fact, the illness might be lodged in their glandulars, that damaged pr 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 prion stuck there in their glandulars. That's why we should not eat pink slime. We should not have ground beef with that in it. Um, it's like that we then add ammonia to, to, uh, to like, as if we think we could disinfect it. Ammonia will not kill a prion. Uh, bleach probably wouldn't kill a prion. Probably only hydrochloric acid would kill a prion. It's like, so we're weakening our body with ammonia that you have to cook out, and at the same time, we're putting sensitive parts of the cattle's body, the, the dark meat or whatever, that where the prions can concentrate the most, where they concentrate most in glandulars, organelles, brain, spinal fluid. And that's why it's dangerous to get va vaccines and stuff from, uh, from these sources, growth hormone from people. It's dangerous to get um, cultured material and stuff from animals and people. Um, so there's always the safety concern. But my point is, so there's been this cover-up. No scientist has wanted to trace the prion to its actual meaning. It's like, because if they're in medicine, they know that every protein is produced by a subreaction uh, in, in the human biochemistry. It's like, and they never came up with the, the subreaction for the prion. For, for the prion, it's like, did the brain manufacture it? Did a, did a gland in the body manufacture it? No. Let's see. And anyone who, who, who's in chemistry by this year. See, if we, if we don't know these things in, in our um, science classes now, it's like, how do we think we could invent life in a laboratory? How do we think life occurred on its own from base elements? Even though electrical current uh, passed through the certain right materials will form organic amino acids. We can't make those amino acids become life. We can't make them become something complex. We can't make them become a bacteria, a virus, anything simple. It's like, like when they say, oh, we've discovered arsenic-based bacteria, they didn't discover it in outer space. It's like, that's something they found on planet Earth. We have not found any life in outer space. It's like, we haven't even found any planets with water anywhere near with our telescopes. Uh, that could that with uh, melted water that could support life. It's like none of this is supposed to be possible. <laughs> it's like, but my point is, okay, so this cover up. Well, what are we going to do about it instead? We're not going to worry about Monsanto or them not making as much money anymore because now they don't have uh, funding for as much organophosphates for flea and tick powders for lice powders. Now people don't want to use their fertilizers, their phosphorus uh, uh, fertilizers that. Um, and or nothing with manganese or copper in salt licks. It's like we don't want their ge genetically modified soy beans. And by the way, uh, phosphorus hasn't been in, in, cul in culpable in or other certain fertilizers hasn't been found culpable uh, yet in causing mag cow disease. But um, <clears throat> inevitably, those things are contaminated with things like magnesium, copper, and other things. It's like in the manufacturing. And even if it wasn't, I still doubt it's, its safety. It's like in third world countries, they're putting sewage on their soil. They're putting other dead animals who are probably sick, who would have manifested the illness in four to ten years' time. It's like, and so, um, so what are we going to do about it? We're not going to worry about the hurt feelings of Dow Chemical. We're not going to, it's like, we're not going to keep supporting the soy companies, soybeans. We're not supposed to feed cows soybeans. We're not supposed to feed animals other dead animals. It's like we're not supposed to use that as fertilizer. That all has to go in biohazard. It's like um, anything genetically engineered should be taken off the market because they do it so that it's more resistant to bugs and pesticide, but then it absorbs more pesticide. It really is, could be quite detrimental. What are we going to do about this? 
the first thing to do is get out those quantum computers, the, the super cold semiconductor computers that have that use the binary numbers and not just one and zero, but negative one, minus one. So now it can come up with complex calculations, including biological functionings. With that, we can simulate the prion molecule, uh, and we can use other molecules and see what molecule will bind onto this molecule and, and will um, be permanently attached to it. Or what's something safer than the DMSO um, it has a, a, a chemical name to it. DMSO is a slang term for it. It's, it's sold in, in health food stores as an uh, analgesic rub. Uh, people with, uh, elderly people use it. It might remove plaque from the brain, although that hasn't been proven. It's a similar compound to what's found in rainwater, but maybe the, the manufacturing base elements that they're using could be safer. When they make it, it could become a pharmaceutical grade. Um, it's like we could we could study if if, if there's a, a better form of DMSO, uh, if there's something of a plant life, a molecule that's um, more benign that might uh, be helpful in um, in uh, it's like we can also study what other nutrients or things could be used in patients with um, mad cow disease to see how it could slow slow their biochemistry problems down so really run a lab simulation in in full it's like never before have we been able to use a human genome and individual biochemistry to determine what's best for that individual it's like and how their body would react to certain things although it still wouldn't be fail safe it still would give us not much more information than what we've had what we have presently um, we might also study what nutrients could be in a person's body to prevent uh, the illness from ever happening. Or if there is a vaccine, it will be easier easier to um, come up with. I'm, ha I'm leery about using a bacteria or a virus to treat mad cow disease. I don't think that'll ever happen. Um, or think about substances run a, um, a, a quantum computer, a super cool quantum computer, which are brand, fairly new on the mark, fairly new on the world stage, and very few people have them. Um, it's like we could increase, we, we could increase writing these binary codes and maybe find other ways to do compu uh, computer um, things such as uh, colored numbers, like putting a color on these numbers. Maybe we would have more binary codes. Um, or using shapes instead of numbers. It's like, what else could we do? I mean, we're getting to the point of atomic data storage where we can store things on, a, on molecules, store vast amounts of data, although it's still experimentally. But to actually simulate a brain cell and find out what substances actually increase the brain's electrical activity and what don't. So the problem is the scientists have for so long been using cell lines. Cell lines. Taking a, taking a cell culture out of, out of a person or a dead, a dead body, cadaver. And with the cell lines, using it to, the, it's like those cells become cancerous, right? And so then they, then they try, to de, try to determine what work, works on the cell lines to cure cancer. But the problem being that once the cells are taken from the body, they lose the electrical um, biorhythm, algorithms and things that the body has. That's why they mutate and become cancerous. But then they never die. It's like what we've been studying on cancer are cell lines that they'll never die. It's like maybe maybe what would have helped cure cancer inside the body would ne never registered on these cell lines because it wouldn't kill the cancer. It's like really very strange way that we conduct science. Um, Like, the first law of medicine is, is the Hippocratic Oath, to do no harm. And so, so often drugs get pulled off the market, banned because of the side effects, increased, of course, what the FDA had said because they, Monsanto made a big buck or a Dow Chemical or whoever is in the manufacturing of these. It's like, and that's really what our government lobbies and other things have done. These Monsanto and other lobbies have had so much power and so much money that they've been able to cover up anyone who had a word against who feared that this would indeed cause mad cow disease or other problems in humans or Alzheimer's later on down the road. It's like, um, really with these quantum, uh, 
uh, super cold computers we need to start studying natural remedies and things and learn how they work and operate. So let's find out what Lily of the Valley compound would be supportive in schizophrenia instead of using like a nightshade variety. It's like it now's the time if we don't grab this window of opportunity in 500 years when mining runs out and all those precious alloys and semiconductor materials run out it's like we will have lost the chance forever moreover I think I think that in the next 200 years is our last window of opportunity uh, it's like I believe in an, apoc an apoc apocalyptic end of the world I believe also that the moon is moving away in 1 to 5 to 10 to 50 million years the well, earth will no longer support life but be, long before that, there will be shortages, mineral shortages. It's like, and if you believe in the book of Revelation, God has, has laid out uh, a timeline of Revelation that's going to occur. Thank you for listening, and God bless the United States of America.